All right, what's up, YouTube? Um, today's guide is going to be about scouting your opponent. Um, it's not going to be about you know where to look for sheep. Uh, it's it's a it's literally like about you know how to use your scout to get information, what kind of information you're looking for. Um, I think this is one of the most important things in the game. Obviously, like using your scout constantly. I mean, if you're in lower leagues and you ask advice of someone older, someone older, someone higher up, they're going to be uh they're going to be telling you, "Hey, you're not scouting enough. Hey, you know, you should have seen he was going fast castle or hey, you didn't scout his unit composition properly." That kind of thing. Um you'll you'll hear that quite a lot. Uh honestly, I hit diamond without being super good at scouting. Um and so one of the advantages is like like, it's okay to go into a game with a game plan, like, I'm going to feudal rush with English, and you just do that every game, and you execute your build. Um, even in that situation, you need to be scouting, right? Because you need to know what your opponent's doing and where to attack. But it's also, um, it's, in my opinion, fun and also maybe better sometimes to respond to what your opponent is doing. And, um, you know, I play responsive sieves, like Ottomans and Roos, that are a little bit flexible um, and can do different things. So, I do, a lot of times I don't go into the game with a set put game plan, right? Like, I respond to what my opponent's doing. So, we'll get more into that. So, basically, when you're scouting, you guys are about to see the, the most unreal paint graphic ever made. Are you ready for this? When you're scouting... There's four types of builds you're looking for, right? These are basically, this is basically all you can do in Age of Empires 4 right here. It's these four things. It's pretty simplified. Um, you can either be going for multiple town centers. You can be going for trade. You can be going for feudal aggression or fast castle. Um, yeah, there's like, you know, like there's other stuff you can do in the game right obviously right but these are the four main types of builds right even if you're playing against mongols and they tower rush you they're going for something like this behind it they're either going for more aggression behind it they're going for trade behind it which is most likely with mongols right or they're going for another town center or a fast castle behind it right the tower rush isn't the, their core strategy that game right this their core strategy is one of these four and this is true of every, every game of age of empires so how did these builds work against each other? And then we'll talk about how to scout which one your opponent is doing. So, town centers. Town center boom is good. Um, you know, if that's the strategy you're going for, that's fine. And it is okay in most situations. Um, but you have to be careful if your opponent is trading or going for feudal aggression or even fast castle. Like, and I'll explain what you need to be looking for, right? So let's say you're going into the game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build multiple town centers. And the first thing you notice, um, at four minutes when you scout and you're aging up, you haven't started mining stone yet. You scout your opponent and you see they're going for trade. Is at that point you should scrap the two town center idea. That is the one situation where going two town centers just doesn't work all that well. Now, I don't need comments from you guys saying, well, in Gold League, I built four town centers, and uh, my opponent traded, and I beat them. Look, anything can happen in Gold League, I'll be honest. Um, at high levels, town center boom is never going to beat trade boom. Trade boom is the best kind of kind of boom in the game. Um, and if it goes untouched, you're not going to beat your opponent. So... Um, Anything is possible in lower leagues, right? Like your opponent might be trading, but maybe they don't know how to micro their army very well. Maybe they don't know how to make counter units very well. Maybe they just don't know how to play the game very well, right? They just know how to trade. So anything can happen, right? But if your opponent is trade booming, the only thing that you can do to counter that at a high level and at lower levels as well, because... Right, you want to start playing like you're playing at a high level and lower levels. That's how you get to higher levels, believe it or not. It's feudal aggression. The only thing that's going to stop the trade is feudal aggression. You've got to stop that. You got to stop it right away. And occasionally, occasionally, if the trade is coming in a little bit late or it's not super heavy trade, 
you might be able to pull off a fast castle and then immediately attack the trade. Like, I'm talking drop a keep on it, like, a few minutes into castle, get all your units down there. But that, even that is very risky. I would say feudal aggression is the only surefire way to stop trade. And even that, guys, feudal aggression, if you make a mistake, you can lose your whole army, and then the, the person who's trading will be able to outmass you, and you'll never catch up again, because trade trade boom is so insane. So this is one of the reasons why people want to see trade more and more reworked. Um, we did get that nerf in the latest patch this week. It wasn't enough. Trade is still going to be um, quite strong if it goes untouched. So if you see trade, you must attack. You must stop it. And you should wall the market on your side as well, right? so that your opponent doesn't start trading with it and you don't notice um but yeah that's that's it about trade we'll talk about how the other builds interact with each other thankfully trade is not something that people are doing every game so let's talk about how these other builds interact with each other um feudal aggression is quite good against town centers if you play it right so if I'm going feudal all-in as Ottomans and my opponent's going for multiple town centers. Um, in that situation, you want to get rams pretty quickly and try to just put pressure on that town center and get a bunch of villager kills and end the game in feudal. But the town centers, um, the player going for town centers can... Uh, and most of the time, it's going to be just two town centers, right? So two town centers total. They're just going for one extra town center. Um... Most, a lot of the time, though, if they play it well, they can hold. So I think it's pretty even, and uh, both strategies are viable against each other. Um, Fast Castle. How does Fast Castle come into the mix? Well, Fast Castle is an interesting one. So I like to use Fast Castle as a response to multiple town centers. So, for example, if I scout that my HRE opponent or my English opponent is going for early second town center, one thing that I'll do as Ottomans is go straight into Fast Castle and try to get all the relics and then drop my own second town center. Now those relics count as villagers, right? Because you're getting, if you get five relics, you're getting 400 gold a minute. Um, a villager is worth 40 resources a minute, I believe. So that's worth 10 villagers right there, right? So you're catching up in that way. You're also getting an infinite source of gold. Um, that you don't have to fight over on the map. So once the gold starts running out, you're still going to have 400 gold a minute. And um, it's a really good advantage. And you can also grab the sacred sites as well. So Fast Castle as a build, guys, it's totally useless if you don't do anything with it. Now, what do I mean by that? I've seen this a lot in lower yellows. It's like a player rushes castle, but then they just mass units in their base. They gotta take their time, they don't go for relics, they're just building knights and they're queuing them to the front of the base. Guys, the point of fast castle is to immediately get value out of your castle, right? So you wanna you wanna make castle age units right away and start raiding with them at the very least. And you wanna go for relics right away in pretty much every situation. I don't care if you're Abbasid or China or Civ that you think doesn't need relics, you should go for relics, right? Even if you don't think that you need the relics, you need to get them away from your opponent. You don't want your opponent to have those relics either. So it's a double double benefit, right? Because you're if you get five relics, not only do you have 400 gold a minute for free, your opponent has zero gold a minute for free, right? When they could have had 400 gold a minute for free. So it's extremely, extremely valuable, right? So how does feudal aggression work against fast castle? It can be, um, it can be very good. Right, but you have to attack the right spots and you have to attack quick enough, right? You can't just start massing units and then at the nine minute mark you try to go in and your opponent just hit castle with the Burgrave and they're they're pumping out Castle Age men at arms, right? Like you have to really, really be aggressive from the beginning against a fast castle build. And you should always be aggressive with your first units if you're going for feudal aggression, but especially against fast castle. Because if you're not slowing down that castle age, and you're not killing villagers or hurting them in any way, then the fast castle is going to, to win out, right? When they get those castle age units out, it doesn't take a lot of knights and men-at-arms to, to throw the fight in that, that, that person's favor. 
So and we talked a little bit about the builds, how they interact with each other. Um, I don't think that anything hard counters um, the other, like Town Centers does not hard counter Fast Castle. Fast Castle does not hard counter Town Centers. Feudal Aggression does not hard counter any of this. It all works well against each other, except for trade. Trade hard counters everything, and uh, you have to, you gotta kill it. You gotta kill that trade. So, um, yeah, those are basically the types of builds people go for, and uh, that's what's possible in a game. So I'm going to show you guys just a quick couple examples of how to scout what your opponent's going for. It's from a recent game. So at the four minute mark, you see I'm already running my scout into the base. The first thing I notice is the villagers on stone. What does that many villagers on stone mean, guys? It's quite simple. He's going for town centers. And it really is that simple, guys. You just need to get into your opponent's base, see what they are mining, see what resources they are going for, and you can tell what they're doing from there. So... I scout that he's going on stone super early before he's even aged up as English. He's English in this game. So, um, that, like, instantly, instantly I decide to go for Fast Castle here. Obviously, I didn't say anything out loud in this situation. You can't necessarily tell what I'm doing. But, yeah, instantly I decide to go for Fast Castle and get for Relics. Um, this was a great game. You can check it out on YouTube and see exactly how I respond to the two-town center play if you want to. But I just wanted to show you guys, like, what you're looking for, you know? You're, you're scouting, and you, you look for, um, you know, I've, I found the stone, so I realized they're going for town centers. But I'm, I'll show you guys here as well. This one was more difficult to figure out. So I'm playing against English once again. It's about the four minute mark. I'm scouting. I immediately see he's not going for the early stone. And by the way, I've played against this player multiple times, and I know that they like the early stone. So I was a little bit um, confused. And here, I'll let you guys hear my thought process as I scout his base. Probably not, though. He's probably not. He's already pulled off gold. So that means either town center or feudal push. So, yeah, just seeing something as little as, okay, he's not mining gold, right? You know that he's not going fast castle at that point. It's English, so they're, they're not going to trade. I mean, you don't they're likely not going trade. I've never, I've, I've, in, I've encountered English trade like once ever. Um, so you can pretty much eliminate, and also they'd be mining gold for the traders as well. So you can pretty much like just by seeing they're not on gold, you can eliminate um, the fast castle build. But at this point, I'm still not sure. Right? Is he going to make units in feudal? Is he going to go for a town center? So I don't leave. I keep scouting. Right? And. Um, Eventually, I realize, okay, he's sending some units forward. I got to deal with that. And there's my stable coming in as soon as I hit feudal. And I see the barracks. So I'm aware there's going to be a few units coming forward at least. Now, in this situation against English, guys, you're not done scouting. You're not done at all. It's not, okay, he's going for feudal push. There's a long bow. There's a barracks, right? Because there's a very common build with English where they rush out um, three longbows, two spears, and then they go for multiple town centers. So you're you're not done. And um, I'm also going to use this this game to show you guys how I use my scout to keep track of the army as well. So I I saw the barracks, so I respond with an archery range as well. So I've got my stable, I'm instantly producing from it, got my archery range, and then I need to go back and scout. I need to see how many units are coming for me. The only reason I ran back with the scout was for the sheep, to get those sheep uh, under my town center. And now my scout's going back, because I need to know how many units are coming, I need to know where they are. Um, all of that kind of stuff is going to give you a major advantage, right? This is why you want to constantly be using your scout. My scout runs into the army, I see two spears, two longbows. 
And at that point, I said that usually means town center because he only sent a few units forward. But I'm still not 100% sure, right? I'm going to make sure that I make enough units to deal with this. I still don't know for sure that he's going for town center. But I decide to keep my army back here so I can keep track of my, uh, my scout back here. I decide to keep my scout here so I can keep track of his units and not let them do too much damage. And, uh, now this will be a little slow for a second, but I think this is a really good example of showing you guys just how to constantly use your scout to benefit you. Now I'm pulling off the stone because I see his units are coming over here. So I, look, my villagers are already gone, right? And I already got enough stone for two military schools as well. I accidentally, I was going for stone for three military schools, but I didn't get enough for the third. And that's okay, we'll get it later. And he's already, like, he can't attack the stone, so now he's looking for somewhere else. And uh, at this point, I thought he would change directions, but um, I'm not going to bring my army out of position to a spot where they can get killed, right? I'm going to look for his army before I try to engage with my scout. And uh, I quickly notice, okay, he didn't actually go to this side. And you can see him using his scout in the same way, right? He's trying to look for where to attack, and that's when I notice more units coming in. There it is, more, more units coming in. So this is where I drop another archery range. And um, yeah, we're just going to watch for another minute or two because I want to show you guys um, how to recognize like that your enemy has overextended and take advantage of that. I'm just trying to keep track of the army here. Just super important to keep track of where that army is because if that whole army shows up on your wood line and you're not ready, um, five, ten villagers, not ten, but you know, five villagers will be dead. You know, six villagers will be dead in a second. Oh, can you right? Keep these units out of position so that could be good. That could be really good for us. And see, now he's overextended. He doesn't have enough units to take the fight anymore. And he is walking behind my base. And that is a weakness of English army, is it's slow. There's no cavalry. There's no movement speed bonus of any kind. So he's out of position, and now I can clean this up. And now I have map plan out. All right. Now I have map control. Now I can go scout and see if he ever went for another town center or if he's just making more units to defend or what he's doing. So, yep. That, um, I think was a really good, just like, you know, example of how to use your scout in a fight, um, how to use your scout to defend. And, um, yeah. The, uh, I was going to show you guys another little example of how I scouted trade, but this is just kind of silly, like, look, my scout, my scout runs into the traders, I know they're trading. Amazing, right? Amazing. So, the point is to get your scout into their base around the four minute mark at the very latest, honestly, like, can even, no, no, I'm sorry, not the very latest, like, just around that four to five minute mark, you need to be scouting, you need to know what, A, what landmark your opponent B went for, you need to know B, what strategy they're going for out of the strategies we talked about here. And C, you need to know what kind of army they're going for if they're going for army. And, like, I, you know, I didn't really get to this yet, but is your scouting doesn't end after the four minute mark, right? Like, that's just like the first glimpse you get into their strategy, but your opponent might pivot at any point, right? If they lose a fight in the middle, or at your base, they might go for another town center because they feel like they're behind. They might pivot into castle. And you can always tell these kinds of things, guys. Like, even at the eight-minute mark, it's the same thing. If you're, scout if you're scouting that they have ten villagers on gold, they're probably going castle, you know? 
that's probably what they're working towards. There's not much you can do with gold in the feudal age. You can make men at arms if you're English, but that or uh, or HRE, but that actually doesn't cost too much gold. So, yeah, um, you just always have to be scouting, knowing what your opponent's doing. I promise it's going to, like, it's going to change your gameplay. Trying to get used to doing this all the time, and it's not going to be easy. Like, you're not just going to watch this video in your next game. You're going to scout perfectly, right? But if you practice these things every game, um, your gameplay will improve for sure. So I think that's pretty much it for the guide. Let me check my outline. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. So that's a, that's a, that's it for my scouting, um, my scouting guide. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos. I upload videos of my gameplay every day. And I try to upload a couple of like miniature guides like this um, once or twice a week. So, yeah, drop, uh, tell me what kind of guides you want to see next in the comments as well. And uh, thanks for watching.